Hello children, today I bring to you a new story. It's called The Golden Goose. Once upon a time, there was a woodcutter and his wife who lived with their three sons. The two oldest sons were clever and spoiled by their parents. But the youngest who was called Dan wasn't so clever or spoiled. Indeed, his mum, dad and brothers laughed at him. One day, the woodcutter was unable to work in the forest, so he sent the eldest son in his place. His mother, who loved her eldest son dearly, packed him a fine lunch of sausage rolls and lemonade and waved him goodbye. Before starting work, the eldest son, who was a lazy boy, thought it would be a good idea to have a little bite to eat. So he sat down on a log and laid out the fine food his mother had packed him. But before he had time to bite the end of a sausage roll, an odd little man popped out of nowhere. Share your food with the hungry beggar, asked the man, licking his lips and dropping his hands together. Go away, snapped the eldest son, who was mean as well as lazy. This is my food and I'm not sharing it with anyone, especially a funny little thing like you. Well, really, said the little man. Nothing good will come from being so greedy and mean. And, do you know, that's just what the eldest son found out for himself when after finishing off all the sausage rolls and swigging all the lemonade, he cut himself badly and had to go straight home without any wood. The following day, the middle son was sent to cut wood in his brother's place. Once again, his mother packed him a fine lunch. Once again, as he sat down to eat, the funny little man popped out of nowhere and asked for a nibble. And because the middle son was no kinder than his brother, the little man was again told to go away, which was a mistake because the middle son also cut himself badly and had to go straight home without any wood. For you see, the little man was a magician. On the third day, the woodcutter had no choice but to send his youngest son Dan to cut the wood in the forest. This time, the mother couldn't be bothered to pack a fine lunch for she considered that anything nice was wasted on her youngest and silliest son. So she gave him nothing more than a crust of stale bread and a bottle of sour milk and told him he was lucky to get anything at all. On this occasion, when the little man popped up to ask for a bite to eat, Dan said, I'm afraid it is a very simple meal but you are more than welcome to share it with me. I always like making new friends. So, you can imagine his surprise when he unwrapped the parcel of food to discover that the tiny scrap of stale bread and the bottle of sour milk had magically turned into scrummy sausage rolls and lemonade. Dan and the little man ate and drank until they could eat and drink no more. You've been fine company and I always say that one good turn deserves another, said the little man. So why don't you cut down that old tree over there? I do believe you will find something interesting beneath it. Dan chopped down the tree and do you know what he found beneath it? A goose with feathers of gold. Wow! Dan exclaimed and turned to thank the little man. But he had vanished. Dan knew that if he took the golden goose home, his brothers would take it away from him. So, instead of going home, he decided to walk the world in search of his fortune. After his first day's travelling, Dan found an inn where he could stay for the night. 
the innkeeper and his three daughters would have stolen the golden goose from Dan, but he never let it out of his sight, not for a single minute. The next morning, Dan plucked a golden feather from the goose and paid for his lodgings with it. Then he tucked the goose under his arm and left. As the landlord's eldest daughter watched him walk down the road, she thought, Hmm, just one of those feathers of gold would buy me a very fine dress indeed. And so she raced after Dan and reached out to pluck a feather from the goose's tail. But do you know, as soon as she touched the goose, she couldn't let go. Let me go! Let me go! screamed the girl. But Dan simply strode on saying, I can't stop now. I've got a whole world to explore. So the girl screamed all the more until her sisters came out to see what the commotion was about. They grabbed hold of their eldest sister and tried to pull her away. But as soon as they touched her, they too were stuck fast. Dan strode on, ignoring the girl's cries. Then as they were passing through the village, the parson saw what he thought were three girls chasing a boy. Disgraceful behaviour, he cried and caught hold of the girls to pull them away. But as I am sure you have guessed, as soon as he touched the last girl in the line, he was stuck fast. And so it went on and on until Dan and his good had quite a following. There were the landlord's three daughters, the parson, a school teacher, a village blacksmith, a bell ringer, four shopkeepers, thirteen housewives. Together they marched on and on until they reached a city where the king lived. Dan had heard that the king had a daughter who, though very beautiful, was always sad and never laughed. This made the king so unhappy that he had promised her hand in marriage to whoever made her laugh. Dan was used to making people laugh without even trying and so he was sure that he could bring a smile to the prince's face. Boldly, he marched right up to the palace and into the courtyard. You should have seen how people pointed and laughed to see how Dan and his golden goose were followed so closely by such a long line of struggling people. They laughed so much that the princess came to see what all the fuss was about. And when she saw Dan and his goose with the long tail of stumbling, struggling people following close behind him, her lips began to twitch. Her chin began to wobble and before she knew it, she was roaring with laughter. In fact, it wasn't a very ladylike laugh at all. But the king didn't mind one bit and he said that Dan and the princess should be married at once. Dan never forgot the odd little man and when he eventually became king, he never forgot that one good turn deserves another thank you children hope you've enjoyed this story good night and sweet dreams